really is a privilege to be here to talk to you. Good lad. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your, your service to our, our country. Thank you for our, your support of our, of our army. This is a time that we have so many issues that divide our country, so many issues that divide our Congress. But one issue that really brings the Congress together is support of our United States Army over the last seven years, particularly since we've been at war. Good lad. Thank you so much for your support. Appreciate that very much. Bill P., it's great to be here with you. Thank you for your great work as commander, cadet commander. And what a privilege and pleasure it is to, to share this occasion with all of you, the young men and women who are going to be the future of our army. You're the best of our best. And pleased and privileged to be able to be here and, and, and be a part of this occasion. And when I look out, I see your faces and I it's, I'm surprised how many Marshall scholars I've, I've run into in my services as your, as your secretary who are serving in senior positions in our United States Army. I, I believe Colonel Barron happens to be one of those. Colonel Barron, great to see you. You were a Marshall scholar in what year? 1980. It's to be a long time. <laughs> Thanks. I'd also like to thank the Marshall Foundation for their of this seminar this year, the work they've done with leading it through these years. Washington Lee and BMI for their support and also acknowledge the role that BMI played in the, in the development of the person who's the namesake of this award that, that honors every one of you. To this year's best and brightest, congratulations. It is a privilege to share this occasion with you. Now all of you who are here today have really had a, a leg up on, on General Marshall. He was a different student as he would describe himself. As recipients of the Marshall Award, you've been recognized for both your military and your academic achievements. General Marshall once remarked that his academic abilities really didn't flourish until he got to Fort Leavenworth General Staff College. And he said that the academic work there was the hardest thing he ever did in his entire life. So you began your, your career already having distinguished yourself, and we're, we look forward to the career ahead for you. General Marshall's biographer has captured the essence of his service in two phrases you hear often referring to him. He consistently worked above his grade, and he was a demon for integrity. The phrases sum up his career and his character. Both describe the legacy you have inherited and set the bar for every one of you. You are the best and the brightest. Demons of integrity, work above your grade, and we expect a lot of every one of you. But this afternoon, I'm going down a little different path that I would normally take speaking to a group of, of cadets. I'm going to talk about a, a narrow issue, but a narrow issue that I believe is how we handle this issue is going to do a lot to shape the army that you are going to lead as you are going to grow up in. I'm going to ask you to join with your army leadership and work on this specific challenge that is at the heart of what it means to be a soldier in the United States Army. I'm going to ask you to join in making our Army the band of brothers and sisters that our values demand. Soldiers never leave a fallen comrade. You know what that means. Soldiers take care of soldiers. You know what that means, too. Soon, every one of you will lead a subset of the 1.1 million soldiers who are on point for freedom around the world today. Every one of those soldiers is a volunteer. And those soldiers are engaged today in the third longest war in our nation's history, soon to be the second longest war in our nation's history. And it's the longest war we've ever fought with an all-volunteer force. Every man and woman that wears the uniform today is somebody that stepped up and said to our country, here am I, send me. And as you, those who've joined in the last seven years, young men and women who said with their nation at war to our country, here am I, send me. They've succeeded, and they have figured out how to win a war that a lot of people in our country and around the world had, had long given up on. They exercise sound judgment, they do their duty, and most of them live Army values. Most of them have demonstrated their willingness to do whatever it takes to live up to our Army values, even if it means risking their life or giving their life. They make thousands of well-considered decisions on the spot and over the course of a deployment. 
They're shaping the future of Iraq and Afghanistan. They're shaping the future of our country, and in fact, shaping the future of the free world. That's the army that you're joining. You soon will be a leader in that army. But despite the extraordinary record of our army, within our army, we have a relative handful of soldiers. A handful of soldiers who betray the brothers and the sisters that they serve. Soldiers you will lead. Soldiers who betray our most basic values. Soldiers who, whose conduct and values are out of line with the overwhelming majority of the soldiers you'll serve with. But because of the insidious nature of their conduct, their misconduct, it is misconduct that does damage to the Army that extends well beyond the reach of those individual soldiers. And what is this conduct that is so insidious? And what I'm going to focus on with you today. It's the misconduct of sexual assault and sexual harassment, which has no home in our Army, but unfortunately, it does find a place in our Army. Since 9-11, 1,800 soldiers, 1,800 American soldiers have been punished for sexually assaulting a fellow soldier, a fellow American soldier. Experts estimate that only one out of every five sexual assaults is reported. So that means, if that metric is true, close to 10,000 sexual assaults have happened soldier on soldier, American on American, since 9-11. The rate of reported sexual assault in our Army is twice, twice the rate of the other services. We're an Army of war, but at least for this small subset, we are an Army at war within itself. Fratricide. American soldier on American soldier. Middle of the war. Blue 